Hi everyone, Byron Martin here at Logies. Today we're going to be looking and talking about plants that move. And two of the most famous and notorious are the Venus flytrap and the Mimosa pudica or the sensitive plant. And both of these plants are interesting in that they have mechanisms which actually cause the leaves to shrink up. And most of us know the sensitive plant that if we touch it, it collapses. And we also have Venus flytraps, which are the favorites of kids. And they have these traps, obviously, at the end of the leaves. And a bug or a fly will crawl into them. And then there's some very small hairs which you can see on the inside. And when the insect travels inside, it touches it and it closes. When an insect's in there, it's wiggling around. And that actually causes the trap to produce digestive juices that eat it. When it's tickled like this, there's nothing in there moving and it'll open back up. Really a lot of fun. And in terms of their culture, these are actually native to the southeast United States and the Carolinas. They grow in the swamps. So we grow them in water and you want to use purified water or at least non-chlorinated um, water. And you also want to make sure that they're kept in a swamp condition where they're damp most of the time or water sitting in it. They also have a dormancy in the wintertime, which you'll normally go back into the pot. And that happens in the swamps as well as in containers we grow in, the, in here in the greenhouses. Artificial light can actually interrupt that because it's really a daylight thing that's causing it. They don't like fertilizer or a lot of it, so don't think by feeding them any type of plant food you're going to actually gain on them. And the other thing is, is they don't need insects to live. So don't be feeding them thinking they're going to grow better by giving them flies and ants and such things as that. They can live perfectly fine without ever being fed an insect. And if you want to watch them open and shut, then you definitely don't want to give them anything because once that digestive juices consume that, that's the end of that leaflet that was opening and shutting. Next we have the Mimosa pudica. This is the um, sensitive plant and it is actually somewhat of a challenging plant to grow. It, grows in very, very high light. It can tolerate dry conditions, but not to the point of putting it into wilt. So it's a critical point there of dryness and then it going into severe wilt and that's the end of it. It also doesn't like wet feet. So uh, keeping it evenly moist or with water sitting in the bottom of a tray or such as that for too long can actually cause root disease on it. And it does bloom if you grow it long enough, it has little tiny pink flowers that come out, are quite pretty. This plant is actually native to the America, Southern Americas of Central America or South America and some in the Caribbean. And it actually grows out in full sun as mats where if you have to really walk through it, it's pretty intense because of these thorns that are on the side of it. It can be trimmed back. So a plant like this could be, when it's starting to reach out too far, could be cut. And I would probably leave the center of the plant in like that because excessive pruning on this can cause the whole thing to collapse. So you want to kind of go easy on it if you're trying to head it back because it's gotten too big. As far as its culture goes, as I mentioned, you don't want to overwater and you don't want to underwater. We see it going both ways where there's damage. You want to make sure it's under really high light and generally we grow them warm. So they are plants that we keep above 60 degrees. I wouldn't keep it in a cold window or in a cool greenhouse to try to get it to winter over. Generally, they're not long lived plants. So um, they can live for two or three years. Best thing to do is let them go into flower, collect some seed and start over again. Can be rooted by cutting, although we generally don't do it that way. They do have some susceptibility to spider mite when they're in the greenhouses. So you want to keep your eye on that and treat them if you start seeing the stippling in the leaves. And other than that, they're pretty much pest free. So what other curiosity to this plant is they close their leaves up at night. So not only do they collapse down like that, but at night you'll see them completely collapse, fold them up, and then in the morning as the sun rises and light comes on them, they open up again. And that's very common for many plants. I know our Caliander does that, which is very closely related to this. Well, thank you for watching. There's some interesting plants that move. If you'd like more information, visit us at logis.com.